okay, okay, okay. I did a legacy budget video. So I thought, fuck it, let's play some vintage. So this is White Eldrazi. Uh, the gold is going to around $24,000. Of course, that's some sort of medium price for some of these cards. Like a Lotus won't set you back 10 grand. You can probably get a, a beaten up shitty, like, unlimited one, is it? For, I don't know. 5,000, sorry? 500, can you imagine it? I'll take 10! 5,000. Uh, fun fact, I can play this deck in paper, but I don't own any of this column here, which is all the power. And I also sold my mana crypt because I hate playing it in Commander because the card's fucking lame. Although that said, I should probably have one for Canlander, but whatever. This is White Eldrazi. So we play all of the Soul Lands for... Well, not all of the Soul Lands. We play four Ancient Tomb of Four Eldrazi Temple. We play no City Traders. We've got the one of Strip Mine because it's really looking for. Not Reserve. Restricted. Not Reserve List. These cards are Reserve List. And that's a list that needs to go in the fucking bin. We have four Cabin of Souls, two Caracas, a load of planes, and three Wastelands. Then we have a load of ways to lock our opponents out of the game. So we have restricted cards like Thorn of Amethyst is a one of. We have one null one in the main, one null one in the side. Many because it does hurt us a little bit as well. We have the restricted Trinisphere. We have the restricted Chalice of the Void. Then we have the non-restricted Thorn of Amethysts. Thalia. Oh, should I say Thorn of Amethyst is the restricted Thalia? And Thalia is the unrestricted Thalia. We have four Thalias to make their cards cost more mana. We have three Glow Striders or Glow Riders. I like to call them Glow Striders, but Glow Rider probably sounds more like a hip-hop artist. Glow Rider is another human version of Thalia. He's the proto-Thalia. He's a human cleric that did it way before she did. It's not yet time, he says in the flavor text. Cards fucking gas. The reason this isn't Rinwing Mare, which is strictly this card, but a Pegasus, not a human, or a cleric, and it flies. So it's got better stats in a way, is that it being human means that Cavern of Souls can cast it. That's the reason we're not playing Vryn Wing Mare. Then we have three Thalias to make your non-basic lands come into play oh, tapped to slow people down even more. Pretty good in the formats where that, that works. In Vintage, people are playing Mana Box and shit, so it's not, sometimes it's just fucking irrelevant, but it's here anyway. Eldrazi Displacer is here to uh, save our own creatures, displace their creatures to get rid of blockers, although Vintage is a very creature-like format, so in reality, it's here to displace our Thought Ears to fuck up people's hands. If we can displace it over and over and over during the draw step, we get to fuck with their hands significantly. Thought Not Seer takes a card from their, from their hand, and then eventually they get to draw a card if they kill it, or if we displace it, and then we get to exile another card. Thought Not Seer is great against uh, card decks that want to have cards in hand to combo with, mainly like the spell-based combo decks of Vintage. I can play it on turn 2 of Ancient Tomb plus a Drossy Temple. We can play it on turn 1 off of any of our Soul Lands plus a Mana Crypt, um, uh, a Mox or 2 plus a Soul Land. There's loads of ways to play it on turn 2. We have four Lane of the Void main board in case we come up against Dredge because game one against Dredge is like fucking almost impossible for most decks to beat. So we're main boarding it apparently. Um, sure, I ripped this list literally from a five barrel on an empty goldfish. Uh, Freshman Revoker, just a solid card to name their Black Lotuses, their Crypts, their Soul Rings, or whatever we need to name. Sometimes Dak Fadens, I guess. Uh, sometimes Grizzle Brands, if we see one of those bad boys in our future, thanks to an Oath of Druids or something. And then, not that I think Oath even plays with a brand anymore. I don't fucking know. I haven't played Vintage for like a year, maybe longer. I was playing a bit of Shops back when I was playing it last, so this is kind of like Shops. And then we have four Reality Smasher, two Smasher opponents, Tits in. Uh, our Cyborg plan, there's a suspicious lack of disenchant effects, but I guess we do have Stony Silence, a second Null Rod, a two Kataki to hate on artifacts. We have two Graph Divigus Cages, we have two Deafening Silences. So this is against a Dredge and Storm based Yorg Will decks, where Deafening Silence is against anything trying to cast multiple spells. That's pretty much every deck in the fucking format. Part of me wonders if this or Candace should be in the main deck, but I guess it hurts us a little bit too. Priest is good against uh, anything. Um, it's also good when we bring it in alongside Displacer, because we displace their creatures and exile them with Containment Priest forever. And they have four removal spells to bring in against, I don't know, Mentor decks or similar decks to ours, or anything where we think creatures are going to be a problem. That's the fucking deck. Haven't played Vintage for over a year, but I hope you enjoy the video. If you like the video, I'm doing like a, a Saffron Olive thing, but I'm getting like angry while I'm doing it as well, because I'm kind of like the angry Saffron Olive. If you enjoyed the video, turn myself up a little bit. If you enjoyed the video, then by all means, like the video with the like button down below. Drop me a comment, tell me your favorite bit, and tell me what you think of the deck and vintage in general. I'm not going to play a huge amount of vintage on the channel, but I will play it from time to time, because the format is very fun, even if it's people in paper, which is bullshit, but you guys at home can live vicariously through me playing this shit, and also playing formats like vintage and older formats like legacy and stuff, I believe it does make you a better player, and it also teaches you about other card interactions that then come up in Canlander, Commander, Highlander, Cube, and other great formats, and I just love magic in its entirety. With all that out of the way, without me, with all my waffling and cock coffling out of the way. Actually, I'm not finished. This video is brought to you by channelbible.com and my patrons. With that out of the way, this place is vintage. 
I don't think this hand is great, but we can go Plains Mana Crypt into Glow Rider. Or some form of Eldrazi after this, don't we? I'm gonna keep it. I haven't played any vintage in over a year, so maybe I'm just being a fucking idiot. I guess, interestingly, this Mana Crypt could kill me faster than my Glow Rider can kill them. So that's, uh... Certainly something. Force of Will on the Glow Rider. Mind Break Trap pitch to Force of Will. Our opponent. Stand still from our opponent. Sure. Heads. Yeah. Give me head. Glow Rider number two. I'm just going to cast straight into the standstill. There's not really... I can't not, honestly. Otherwise, there's nothing I can do for the rest of the game. So I'm going to have to give them the three cards from standstill. Resolve the Glow Rider. For those of you who don't know, standstill has a trigger on it. When another player casts a spell, you have to sack it. Each opponent draws three cards. Yeah, so our opponent got to draw three cards for the low, low cost of two mana there. But I guess it gets them back to almost parity. Force of was two cards for our Glow Rider. They've got a mana crit for one mana there. They've got a Mock Sapphire for one mana there. They've got an Ancestral Recall for two mana there. Back up to seven. We untap. We always yield. And of course, we ask for heads. Oh, fuck. Three, we draw another land. Okay, let's get into combat. Take them down to 17. We're on an even pegging, apart from the fact that they have six cards in hands and we only have three. And all three of ours are just fucking lands. Our opponent casts Balance, which is good for us here because... Well, they're getting rid of Gloat Rider because I assume they're a Storm deck. But we actually have less cards in hand than them and, and, and less than the same number of lands. They cast Paradoxical Outcome. Yep. Alright, they play their ruby and their sapphire again, they play their top and they spin their top. The hand could be a load of garbage, so hopefully we can draw like a thought not seer or something to have a look at said hand, and also present a threat. Come on, give me heads! Yes! Come on! Okay, maybe, maybe not. Okay, we're gonna pass back to our opponent. I might be scooping up just to go to game two, because we kept a terrible hand with very, very little ways to actually pressure our opponents, and our opponent's done it all. Demonic Tutor from our opponent. They're casting Paradox so after tapping their Sensitive Divine until the game is over. Their card advantage is absolutely astronomical and we've got nothing. Okay, this hand has th two bits of power in it. We can lead with Thalia or Thought Knots here. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. This hand's just pretty good. Wasteland into Thought Knots and Thalia's is pretty strong. We cast Mox Jet. We cast Mox Pearl. This is much, much better. I think my first opening hand was genuinely terrible. But like I said, it's been a while, right? It's been a while. And you forget just how much pure card advantage everyone's got. They're going to Mind Break Trap my Thalia. And I guess we could have... <laughs> we could have avoided that, by the way, by not casting our Mox Jet first. Uh, we didn't have to play around like a daze or anything. So that was kind of dumb, actually. We really, really threw ourselves into a very commonly played vintage card. Oh, God. Learning formats is hard. They play a Tapped Creeping Tar Pit, they play a Mox Sapphire, they play a Soul Ring. I'm going to go Ancient Tomb into Thought Dots here, then Wasteland them to keep their mana sources nice and low. I take the Paradox from out from out of their hand, and I waste... Their hand is currently Mind Break Trap, Library of Alexandria, and Brainstorm. They cast the Brainstorm that we know about, and they cast a Lotus after playing a Library of Alexandria. Okay, they have two cards in hand. We're going to get to start displacing our Thought Knots here to look at their hand and rip a card out each each turn. Give them a card back in turn, but also exiling a card when it comes back in, so that's going to be pretty fun. This next turn, I'm probably going to waste land them again though, after playing my Eldrazi Displace and attacking them for four. We drew an Eldrazi Temple, which actually allows us to displace the Thought Knots here this turn. They crack their Lotus in order to hard cast. So maybe I shouldn't have led the way I did, but they only have one card in hand now, and that used up the Lotus as well, so I'm fine with that. Mana Vault from our opponent, they've got a hell of a lot of mana, but not a whole lot to do with it just yet. Although if they draw Paradoxical Outcome, they're going to get straight back in the game. We drew our own Lotus. Which I guess we want to play... I, I guess, yeah, before we have our own Thalia in play, or to avoid them being able to counter it later down the line. I mean, it doesn't do a whole lot on our deck. It's mainly for... <laughs> when you say Black Lotus doesn't do a whole lot on your deck, that's a very weird statement. One card left in hand. It was not an outcome before, so let's just hope it's not an outcome again. Somehow it's magically transformed into an outcome. We basically know that Underground Sea was what they drew there. I'm going to keep this planes in my hand simply because... Well, I need to make them think they've got something that isn't a bloody mana source. 
We hit them down to eight. They untap. Do they draw an outcome? I really fucking hope not. No outcome from our opponent. We drew a Thalia, which is pretty good, honestly. We attack for four. They don't have the mana for a path or anything, so I guess... I don't know how widely plays Dismember in this format. They had a force in hand. They force our Thalia by exiling a standstill. Essentially, they were keeping the standstill in hand for when they drew the force. They could force another threat or a problematic card like Thalia. They're forcing Thalia there so they can have an explosive paradoxical out turn, outcome turn if they draw it. They cast Yorg's Will here. Interesting. The only rooted card in the, in, in the graveyard for this is Brainstorm. Can they find something off the Brainstorm that will allow them to do... Oh, they got... sorry, I'm talking complete shit. They have a Lotus there too. Can they find something off of the Brainstorm, off the Yorg's Will? They find P.O. off of the Yorg's Will. That's pretty crazy. They crack their Black Lotus. They float a load of mana. And they dig through time. Okay. They dig through time here with three mana in the pool. If they can find another Mox plus a P.O., they can play the Mox, tap it, play the P.O., draw one, two, three... Four cards. Then they can replay both Sapphire and whatever the other Moxin is. Then they can play the Soul Ring. Then they can play the Vault. And yeah, they have a turn. As you can see, Thalia would have been really good here. And then forcing it was perfect. They cast the Mox over, but it's not enough. And they would go to sideboarding. Okay, they didn't quite get that. I guess PO wasn't in the top eight. That's unfortunate. We have a turn one Deafening Silence into a turn two Thalia. And then we draw some sort of other colourless mana source to play our Thorn Lotsiers. This isn't terrible if a little slow, but Deafening Silence is pretty good. So we're going to give it a shot. Funny thing is, any artifact mana we can't actually use on the same turn as the Thought Odds here, because Deafening Silence makes spells. Y yeah, we, we, can't, we can't mox into a Thought Odds here, for example. Hopefully we just draw a Soul Land or something. Well, not Soul Land. Drawing just a mox, actually. Like a white mox would be great. They get taxi and probed us and played two moxen out. We drew Kataki, which isn't terrible at all. Kataki is actually really good here, as we aren't relying on artifact mana at all. Deafening Silence resolves. They have a counter spell. Uh, maybe they have a way to remove it. They might have let Deafening Silence resolve because they want to counter the Thalia. If we play Mox Pearl here, we can't actually play Kataki or Thalia. We're going to play Kataki here because that locks down their mana for the turn. Kataki makes all of their artifacts have an upkeep cost of one, or they have to sack it. Yet they force of will, exiling Mindbreak Trap to counter the Kataki here. Which allows our Thalia to resolve next turn with the Crackers up to keep it protected against, I don't know, Plowshares or similar. They cast Voltaic Key. We're going to play Caracas. Maybe the Cavern to Cavern out of Thalia is better, but I doubt they had a second removal spell after they pitched the Mindbreak Trap to the Force of Will. And also, my, like, Cavern of Souls on Eldrazi. Well, doesn't actually matter. Oh, it's more than one non creature spell. Huh? Derp, so I can actually cast my Mox if I'd cast it before the Thalia. I am an idiot. Also, Cavern on Eldrazi means we can't play the Colorless Ghost for the Thought Not Seer. Derp, derp, derp. I Cavern of Souls on Human, and they scoop it up. White Eldrazi takes the game, even though I kept a terrible hand in game one. If this was a CFB video, the comment section would be like, I stopped watching after the first hand. <laughs> Vince is the name, and winning die rolls is my fucking game! Our opening hand, we can go Frexian, Revoker, name a random mox. <laughs> Doesn't seem great. But fuck it, why not, right? Like, might as well just keep shaky hands. I guess in a hand full of, a deck full of power, I should probably not do this sort of thing. Watch me name Black Lotus here and then just draw it. You know, that's gonna happen, isn't it? Let's go Black. Lotus for now. We can always displace it later. Next turn, I guess we play Big Thalia. Non-basic lands coming to play. Tap doesn't stop artifacts coming in. Untap, which is frustrating. Maybe we want. Isn't there a creature that makes artifacts come to play tap instead? I'm planning to play a Lotus Petal, which is close to being a Black Lotus. It's one third of a Black Lotus. And when you say that out loud, it just shows you how obnoxious Black Lotus really is. Lotus Petal, three mana, Doomsday. We might just be dead, my friends. We might just be dead. But I knew we could have turned one with Thalia. They might think we're shops, at least. They won't think we're this nonsense. They're putting Lotus Petal on top of their deck. Hopefully, if they don't kill us this turn and let us untap, which seems absurd, 
we get to slam a Thalia. But they're probably expecting like a Trinisphere, a Chalice, a Thorn or anything coming up out of us next turn. They are full on Doomsday here with Necropotence, Tendrils of Agony, there is a Wing Kong, Gitaxian Probes and such. They're going to let us untap. Maybe they have Force in hand. Maybe. Cast a Mox Emerald. Cast a Caracas. Cast a Thalia. That gets forced, sure. Cast a Revoker. We should have probably led with the Revoker just in case. And now we're going to name Lotus Petal. And we're going to go to Combat Attack. Next time we can Thought Not Sorry or something out of their hand. Hopefully, like, uh, Revoking the Petal has put them off enough that they won't be able to go off the turn. And then we can just Thought Not Sear them out of the game. Hopefully. Misty Rainforest from our opponent. I assume their plan is to play the Thassa's Oracle off of a Petal and a Blue Source. So Thassa's Oracle is going to be in their deck somewhere. Hopefully the only mana source they've got is Misty plus the Petal. And then our Thought Not Seer can stop them from comboing off with Thassa's Oracle. We definitely should have led with the Revoker, but the Revo maybe not actually. The Revoker on the pedal was good enough. Oh, that felt good. So we can turn one of Thalia. Sure, then the Null Rod's bad. Then we need to draw another mana source for our Thought Not See, uh, We're going to give it a shot. I mean, Thalia into Null Rod might be enough to stop them ever comboing. But we really want to Thought Not See them first, I guess. No thought seeds or similar from them. We drew big Thalia. They cast recall in response to our Thalia. Then our Thalia resolves. Sweet. A second land in Vintage. Tuh. This is uh, coming out of the mouth of the person. Kept a five lander, was it, in the first game? God, I'm bad at Vintage. We drew Wasteland. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're going to play the Wasteland. We're going to move to Combat and Attack. We're going to play a Thalia Heretic Cathar, which means that when they eventually cast Thassa's Oracle... At least it will come into play tapped. If this resolves and we don't draw another land next turn, the strictly correct thing might be to blow up one of the lands of Wasteland and slam Nullrod. It'll take us off being able to play anything, because we won't have the mana to play anything, but it probably means they can't combo out either. They fetch an Underground Sea. They let Thalia resolve, which means they're going to cast something on our end step here. Dark Ritual into Doomsday, potentially. Or just chain of vapor, little baby Thalia. Okay. I may sacrifice a land. I'm going to say no, I don't want to sacrifice a land, weirdly. Black Lotus from our opponent. Aye, aye, aye. It's no wood looking better and better. Lotus Petal from our opponent. Attack Polluted Delta from our opponent. They crack Black Lotus to make three black to Doomsday. This is not looking good for us. They're going to put Black Lotus back on top of the library, so Nullwood's going to be pretty strong. The problem we have is the whole Thassa Oracle thing. Maybe it is Nullwood into Wasteland, then. I really hope we draw another land so that doesn't feel like a terrible decision. Because at least with Big Thalia in play, if they aren't playing any basics, that Delta goes and fetches a, a tapped land next turn. And with the Wasteland as well, and all the artifacts being off, they're going to struggle to cast their Thassa's Oracle. Doomsday is halving their life as well, so we might be able to just beat them down before they can Thassa's Oracle prop. They Doomsday, then the Street Wraith. Perhaps this is to get a Lotus into play now. Then I'm going to the Taxi and Pro Boss. This means we might just die. Pro will draw on the card to three in their library. If they now go recall, there we go. Yep, we're dead. Maybe we should have just played Nullwall, but they would have bounced it anyway. I don't think we had a way out. At least it's tapped though, right? At least it's tapped.
This time around, we have a turn one Glow Rider into a turn two Thought Not Seer. That seems pretty good. No, we don't have a turn one Glow Rider. I'm a liar. This makes green. I've just kept a hand that can't fucking do much. Fuck. Play an Emerald and play an Ancient Tomb, I guess, and pass the turn. I guess I'm going to Thought Not Seer next turn in order to look for counter magic so the Glow Rider resolves. Glow Rider making their combo turns a lot worse. Or if the Thought Not Seer just takes their uh, Doomsday, for example. I'm assuming they're going to have some form of protection for their hand, though. For the record, they put one card on top and one card on the bottom of the library, and they probed to draw the card they put on top. I was going to say the Doomsday could be on top of the library. We may not ever get the Thought Not Seer it, but hopefully it's in hand now so we can... Oh, they just had Black Lotus again anyway. Good old vintage. And they pass the turn with the Lotus in play. Six cards in hand. Okay. We drew a Cavern of Souls, which is actually great here, because we can now name our Drazi. And then we can go white, two colors, and a green, and cast a Thought Not Seer, and hopefully stop them from combo killing us next turn by, like, taking their Doomsday, for instance. That top deck Cavern of Souls was strong. I don't know if it's as strong as their, like, multiple turn one lotuses or whatever but if we get the stopping combo that's pretty good they've tapped lotus for three mana they're now going to brainstorm to put things on top of their library frustrating but fair enough their hand is triple force of will chain of vapor elvish spirit guard okay we're going to get rid of the chain of vapor because we don't want them bouncing on our thought lots here here and then we're just going to have to play Smasher next turn and hopefully they will kill them. Because our Glow Rider will get forced. Aye, aye, aye. Triple Force of Will. Okay, they play the Misty and pass back to us. They got every Spirit Guide in hand as well. We drew Deafening Silence, which is pretty strong here. It will get forced. Just going to cast an uncountable smasher then, I guess. <laughs> Seems dece. Go to combat attack. Next turn we can play Glow Rider or Deafening Silence. But I mean, we're doing 9 to them here, taking them to 9. So they are dead unless they can present some form of blocker. I guess another mana source allows them to play Elvish Spirit Guide as a blocker. Underground C from our opponent. Dark Ritual from our opponent. So there should be two unknowns in hand. Dark Ritual and Yorg will. F fuck. Okay. They've got Lotus and the Gataxian Probe and Brainstorm and the Preordain and Dark Ritual and the Misty. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty good turn for them. I'm going to crack the Misty now. Go get a blue source and start cantripping, I would assume. On the upside, they don't know what's on top of their decks. So it's not like they'd set up with the multiple cantrips already to have the exact kill. They're digging for it. And if they don't get it this turn, they do just die. They probe, they brainstorm. I've gone to looking through like Twitter and Facebook here because well, they've either got it or they haven't. Maybe I should F6. Nope, nope, looks like we won. Legacy's fucking Oh, well, looks like we won! Vintage is easy! And I've won the time wall again! I'm so fucking good at this game. This game's easy. Uh, turn 1 Trinosphere? Yeah, why not? I can also turn 1 Thought Nuts. Let's go... Mana Crypt. Play a Trinosphere. And a Trinosphere Resolve, too. So unless they're, like, dredging the shit out of me, that's a good point. Plays a Misty and passes. Sweet. We're gonna untap and say, give me head. Actually, no, fuck it. I'm gonna change it up. I'm going Tails Never Fails, motherfucker. Oh, fuck. I've never been so unhappy. I'm gonna smash them now. TKS them next. And they can't cast anything because of Twin Sphere, so... Okay. There we go. Vintage is easy. I don't really know what they're doing. So, I guess... I'll just cut my voids because I don't think they're dredge. I'm going to randomly bring in some priests. No, I'm going to randomly bring in some priests. Is that a dumb idea? I brought two priests in. It doesn't seem random random. They can still beat Faith. All we know is that they got beaten by being Trinisphere out of the game and smashed. But that's pretty much almost any deck, right? I guess we keep this. We can turn one Athalia. We can... Yeah, yeah, why not? 
Cataxian Probe from our opponent. And our opponent goes Underground Sea into Mana Crypt. And they cast Time Twister. This could just screw us completely. Let's find out. Yep. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good at all. Okay. And they've got Mox Sapphire and a Soul Ring. We need to draw like Mox Pearl, preferably. Or just a Plains at the very least. Time Vault's in play for our opponent as well. Cavern of Souls that can name Human, but it's not great. Let's go ahead and pass the turn back to our opponent. That Time Twister absolutely fucked me. They untap, upkeep the Vampiric Tutor for Voltaic Key, I assume. They're going to then cast it, untap the Time Vault, and take infinite turns. Yep. Okay. They got us good. This game's hard. Okay, we cut the random priest and we put in Kotaki, Stony Silence, the second Nullwad, so on and so forth. We're on the play, which is going to help significantly against getting Time Twisted out of the game. Our opening hand... Uh, it's not bad, but it's not good. I mean, a turn one Kotaki's kind of shit. We want to play this Glow Rider turn one, but we can't. Do I blind name Voltaic or Manifold key with the Revoker? Okay, let's keep it. Let's keep it. We're going to blind name Time Vault. Is it Time Vault? What the fuck's the card called? Time Vault, Time Time Vault. Yeah, sure. Time Vault, Time Vault, Time Vault. That way, if they've got one Voltaic key and one Manifold key for some, like, you know... Pything needle style like splitting, we're not gonna get fucked. Also they just randomly untap it with some twiddle effect that I don't know as he's play. Mind over matter temple bell style combo. Mox Pearl from our opponent with a Misty Rainforest. Mox Emerald from our opponent. Mox Opal from our opponent. It's a hand with a lot of mana, but what can they do with it? We'll take Island from our opponent. Khan the Great Creator from our opponent. Interesting. We're going to kill our mocks. That's fine. We're going to play Kataki next turn anyway. Slam the Kataki. This means they have to pay for all their artifacts. Next turn, we're going to pay one mana for our Revoker. Frustratingly, we have to pay it off of our plane so we don't zap ourselves and lose two mana. And if we draw a soul down, we can Thor don't see us, so it's not terrible. Oh, they're just going to float the mana. Is this like a PO? This is a PO, right? A Braid the Kataki. Okay. At least we can cast another Kataki next turn. AA, AA. Our opponent upticks their Khan to protect it. We draw an Eldrazi Temple. So we can't go Glow Rider into Thought Not Seer, but then they're going to have mana to play like an Ensnaring Bridge or some shite, so I don't think we want to let that happen. Just play a Kataki next turn, we'll Thought Not Seer them. We attack Khan, taking down to three. What I'm kind of scared of is Ensnaring Bridge or Walking Ballista or, hell, Microsynth Lattice Lock. That'd be bad too. They pay for their moxes with their moxes. They play a blue mana in their main phase to brainstorm. And they scoop it up. Looks like Kataki's pretty good in vintage. And we've won the die roll again because I guess it's better to be lucky than good. Ah, uh, Black Lotus, Mox Sapphire, Ancient Tomb, Eldrazi Temple, Wasteland. Oh, sure, why not? If they count our Black Lotus, we can't cast either of our whites. Oh, boy. I guess in that circumstance, I just slam the Lotus and see what happens from there, right? Because if I play a little of stuff for four, the, the land plus the Sapphire, it might make the Black Lotus feel more counterable. Do you just, do you counter Black Lotuses on turn one in Vintage? Is that a thing you do? Our opponent's bolt to five. Guess they're not Dredge. I don't even know how Dredge. Cast Black Lotus. It resolve. Play a Mox Sapphire. Play an Eldrazi Temple. Crack for three white. Make two colorless. Play an Eldrazi Displacer for both of the colorless Eldrazi mana and one white. Play the Thalia Heretic Kafar with the Mox Sapphire. Now, it's not the most powerful of openings, but it means that their basic lands come in, or non basic lands come to play untapped, including fetch lands. 
and it means we can add Rasi Displacer uh, creatures, although creatures format. And it also means we can follow up with Wasteland or another lock piece if we draw something off the top. But it's pretty good for if we draw TKS or three Atlas Smasher as well. Our opponent leads Mox Emerald, five cards in hand. Mox Ruby from our opponent. A Braid Arthalia. Okay, that's a shame. Ancient Tomb from our opponent. Phyrexian Revoker, probably naming our Mox Sapphire, I think. Yeah. The Abrade is interesting because it suggests they're like base, some part red. So I don't think they're shops. Now, the question here is we've got one card in hand. I think we're going to thought not and give us an idea. This could just be a land. Okay, we've got a Soul Ring. So we deny them on mana. We effectively do the same thing that Wasteland in them would have. Also, we can now like uh, displace our, our Thought Rods here in their either draw step or end step. Get another look at their hand and make them draw a card and exile it. And also with a Wasteland, we can do that. Well, no, our Sapphire's turned off. But we can do it at least once a turn whilst also Wastelanding with this Mox Jet from our opponent. We drew another Ancient Tomb. So we're going to play our Wasteland and we're going to blow up their Ancient Tomb. And we're going to combat and attack for seven. And then in their draw step, They've drawn a card. We're now going to exile our Thought Knots here. Uh, they've scooped it up. We're going to let them draw a card of the Thought Knots here, leave them the battle. They're going to look at both of the cards. Hopefully one would be a land, and then the other one we can exile. And we're going to try to do that every upkeep. But we got them. We got them. The fact that they are playing Revokers plus a Braids, what does that fucking mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm quickly looking through deck lists on MTG uh, Goldfish, and, well... I can't find anything that plays a Braid plus Revoke. I mean, both the cards are good in Vintage, right? Both the cards are real good in Vintage. I'm not bringing my Plowshares on my paths in. I wanted to. But again, if they've just got like a handful of Revokers in their deck, it's not very, very good. Uh, we can turn two a Kataki. Turn three a Thought Not Seer. Is that good enough? Maybe. Maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it. We might even draw some fast mana. Just drawing one Mox, for example, would allow us to accelerate the Kataki onto turn one on the draw, which is much better than playing Kataki turn one on the playoff of Artifact Mana. Mox Jet from our opponent. On a Mortar 6. Mox Ruby from our opponent. Cavern of Souls naming. Here we go. We're going to learn some more about our opponent's deck here. Human. Maybe they are just like red, white. Variant of what we're doing with SL Drazi. Magus of the Moon. Okay. Love to draw Mox here. Love to draw Mox. Come on. We're going to play a Planes. That's the turn. Playing the Planes here was strictly incorrect, by the way. Mainly because if they draw Strip Mine. Oh, wait. Strip Mine. <laughs> strip Mine with Magus of the Moon play is just a mounted. Our opponent plays nothing. Attacks us for two. This Kotaki is going to be good at taxing their board state. The problem with the current configuration of our deck is that we can't actually cast Thought Knots here through a Blood Moon. We don't even have a solving in our deck, I don't think. Oh, they've got Blood Crypt. Not Blood Crypt. <laughs> Matter Crypt, but they can call it Blood Moon if they want. Revoker, naming Black. Naming Eldrazi Display, so they named Black Lotus. We drew another Planes. We play a Kataki. Now, they can tap out all their mana to keep all three of their artifacts around. But do they do it? I haven't played with Kotaki's War Wage since I like first started playing Legacy. It, just, it was just a sideboard slot I had in the, in the traditionally stony silent slot in the, in the modern Death and Taxes. I was playing a Kotaki or two. Ended up being pretty good in some of the, the local meta game against like a um, uh, a Stax deck that was playing... Well, not Stax, what was it? Pox. I think I was playing Pox. And when they were like making a sack of our lands out of Scroll Rack and play, making them have to pay mana for their Scroll Rack and, and other similar um, uh, Vice style effects. It was pretty good. But on the whole, it was shit. And I don't really play it in Megacy anymore. I don't really play it anywhere. It's just not good enough. They did not pay for Revoker. Interesting. I really have to draw a Black Lotus now to punish. They say that. If I draw a Black Lotus, it doesn't do anything in our current configuration of our, our hand and deck. They're going to pay the mana for the Abrade. But the triggers are still on the stack. So they're going to... That Abrade has cost them a Frexian Revoker. I mean, Kotaki's now traded for a Frexian Revoker, Abrade, and a Mox. Jeez, that's pretty good. They've paid to keep their ruby. You'd think they'd pay to keep the jet, right? I guess they don't have any black spells in their decks. So maybe double red's more important. They attack us for two. We go to 16. They play a cavern of mountains. We draw a reality smasher. 
Okay, we really need to draw. Like, Crypt would be insane. It's easily our best draw. Uh, we currently can't cast any of these Eldrazi. Also, just drawing like Revokers, Thalias, Glow Riders, and similar would all be good too. We drew a Thalia. So that's a pretty good blocker here. Mox Emerald from our opponent. Now the question is, do they have a four mana threat, like a Khan or something, for example? Ensnaring Bridge. Okay, well I guess we're not attacking through that for a while. Fuck, how do we even beat that? I guess we need to strand things in their hands with like a Null Rod? Okay, pass back to them after playing our strip mine as a mountain. Let's settle in for the long haul. Another Magus. We drew another Thalia. This is terrible. We drew all the stuff we can't use. Secondary of the same legendary creature, and then a load of colorless creatures. But it makes the moon's really screwing us here. Khan the Great Creator, sure. We're going to get Marcus and Vlatis logged out of the game here. We need to draw a Roker, like, right now for the Khan. Like, literally now. Displacer isn't terrible, but we still need the Crypt. Because we can't activate the Displacer effect. At least it's a body we can play. They grab walking ballista here, or do they grab? Well, the lattice doesn't make any sense. Maybe some form of mana rock to ramp their mana. Tormod's crypt from our opponent. Interesting choice. I don't quite understand it. They cast a Sibian spirit guide. Okay. We drew a revoker. I guess this game will continue. We've named Khan the Great Creator to stop them from doing anything else with that. So now we just need to get a Kataki into play, or perhaps a Nullwad style effect. And that way we can start to tax their mana and resources, and eventually they can't play cards, and eventually we can attack through. That's naming bridge number two. Okay. Another land, sure. So we're looking for a second Kataki. <laughs> uh, or Null Rod. That's what we're looking for. They've now hit a lot of lands, so the whole Kataki thing's not going to be so hot. Pass back to our opponent. We will deck out before them, by the way. We're three cards deeper. How? I don't know, but we are, apparently. I guess we can Thought Nord Seer to deck them out when we draw Mana Crypt. But Mana Crypt might just kill us. Okay, here we go. Oh, fuck. Khan means we can't use Crypt. So now we just die? Oh, I fucked that right up. I mean, they'll draw on a braid before we'll draw any way to kill that Khan. Tails never fails! Oh, fuck. Okay, we can't we can't win now. We have no outs. Our outs were to try and deck them out by displacing our thought nods here. Um I'm scanning over my list one more time. We have no other way to produce colourless mana, so that is game. We will now be bringing in all four of these, all three of these. Because if with Containment Priest in play, if we displace that creature, it's gone forever. We are on the play. 
We have a plowshares. We have a trinosphere. We're going to... Oh, we can't really... We can... Oh, oh, this is rough. We can turn to the thorn on here, so maybe I keep it. If they just go turn one, make us the moon, though, then we just sat around waiting for our planes for a while, but at least we have that. Okay, we play in Rosie Temple, we pass back to them. Hopefully they don't just fucking moon us, and then we've got to draw one of our many planes. And by many, I mean four. Mountain. Nothing from them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Mountain Pass doesn't seem like the strongest line in the game. Mock Sapphire, eh? Ancient Tomb, Mox Sapphire. And then I'm just going to Thought Not Seer them. What's in their hand, my friends? They mold to four or five, I guess. Blood Moon next turn, Snaring Bridge, Khan the Great Creator again. I mean, if we take the Blood Moon. We can actually cast our spells. Yeah. We can deal with bridge at a later date or lock them out. That's the problem. I think we really have an, an out to bridge. Not a good one anyway. Clunky though, because the next time they play, they lose their city, which is really good. So they play the bridge. Sure. Can't attack for a turn now. We drew another temple. So a cavern of souls on Eldrazi. Make a white and two. Play an Eldrazi. And then in their draw step, we're going to Thought Not them. It's going to be painful, but it's going to be worth it. We just want to stop them from casting anything this turn if we can help it. We're going to see everything they've got in their hand. Because they're going to draw a card after the Thought Not they're going. Is this an abrade on the displacer? That would be a shame. A genuine shame. Yeah, okay. So, they're going to draw another card, go up to three. Then we'll exile one. They've got a mountain in hand. We'll get rid of the Khan. They now just have a mountain in hand. Do they play it? Probably not. That seems terrible, right? Like, objectively bad. Oh, I stat the triggers the wrong way round, so we didn't see the other car they drew. That's my bad, I believe. Next turn they can play a Khan, which is frustrating, if they draw one. What else could be good here for them? Just playing anything is good for them, I think. A Magus of the Moon. Yeah, that's pretty good here. Makes our mana pretty bad. Also allows them to play the Mountain without losing the City of Traders as well. So we drew a Thorn of Amethyst. We're definitely going to play. Good old ensnaring bridge. Drawing out games. We want to draw planes to, to plowshares this. And then like a strip mine to get this or this. And then we can strand cards in their hands. So ensnaring bridge doesn't affect our thought not here. But at the moment they're going to be able to at least cast one card every two to three turns. That's a Containment Priest, which we cannot cast, because we don't have any white mana. We need to draw either our Pearl, our Black Lotus, or our one of our four planes to be able to cast our white spells. So we've got a few top decks. We also have numerous like uh, other cards we could top deck as well. Um, none of our Aldrazi are good. 
maybe playing that there when Blood Moon's in play is not a good idea. None of our draws are good, and none of our white creatures are good. So that's uh, only 7, 10, uh, another 3, 13. Only 17 of the cards in our deck are bad here. Yeah. They're tapping for three mana, but then they didn't. So I'm thinking they have a three mana spell that uh, Thorn makes cost four. So I think they might actually have Blood Moon hand. Playing the Spirit of Flash in a Containment Priest would be nice. Nope. Okay, we'll just pass the turn. Drawing planes into Displacer would be absurd because they're making flashing containment priests, start displacing Maguses. Yeah, it'd be pretty good. Oh no, we won't be able to displace Maguses because we have no colorless sources. We'd need to again draw our crypt. Why this version of the deck isn't playing a soul ring, I do not know. Simeon Spirit Guide from our opponent. Keep that hand count down. Don't let my thought not attack. We drew a temple. Pass the turn. I think our chances of winning this are quite low. Because their inevitability of drawing like two more mana sources to then be able to cast, say, a Khan or a Chandra or something of that effect is quite high. Meanwhile, we have f f three or four white... Oh, no, five white sources total in our deck now. Shattering Spree Replicated. Oh, grumble, grumble, grumble. The Replicated one doesn't get taxed by the Thorns. They're going to get to blow up Thorn and Trinisphere here, which really is a bit of a shitter. Wait, how did they pay for that? Black Lotus is now off the table. How did they pay three mana and replicate when they only have three mana and Trinisphere? What am I missing? Okay, so I checked with the judges on my Discord. Big shout out to Megachurv and to Kirsty as well. He got involved with the conversation. Uh, there's others involved. I don't know if they're judges, ALS and uh, Danielle as well. Turns out that Shattering Spree's replicate costs, for those that don't know, is just a part of its like additional costs. It's not like an extra, but like Storm, for example. So that actually they paid one plus one, plus one for the Thorn. They paid three totals. They could play it through Ball. That fucking sucks. Okay, let's pass back to our opponent. That fucking sucks, though. Oh, we drew another Thought Not Seer, which we cannot cast at all because of the whole crypt problem. Okay, we're now into the whole draw planes and draw multiple plowshares plan. Our opponent plays a soul ring for the low low cost of one mana, which upsets me. I want it to cost three. They then cost a Chandra Fire Artisan. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. This game is well out of our way now. The Exodent Ancient Tombs. That's a land drop for them. We drew another Thorn Odds here. Yep. Our deck is soft as fuck to Blood Moon. Like real soft to Blood Moon. They've cast their own rocks 
mocks Ruby into their own chalice, so I guess, you know, sometimes small advantages, I guess. And snaring bridge number two. That's a cough. Okay, game's over. Game's over. We can't beat Blood Moon, and we don't have any disenchant effects on our sideboard, which is kind of weird, but I... Yeah, I guess you want to just go fast and get them. Oh, we fucking won that dive all. Let's go! Mana Crypt, Mox Emerald, Temple, Ancient... Fuck it, sure. Can't cast a Thylem, but who gives a shit? Let's hope they're not some form of storm. Am I right? No, but they are... Am I mirror... Am I... Am I... Am I whatever, fuck off. Mana Crypt. Oh, no, I've just played into fucking Mind Break Trap again, haven't I? One time no Mind Break Trap. One time no Mind... Don't you... Fucking ah well okay it wasn't mine. Vinny are being pitched to force of will. Pleasant control leon control leo leo owns one land. They're not wrong, friends. They're not wrong. They play a delta. They crack a delta. They play an island. They preordain. We're gonna go tails. Yeah, fucking get on my level, boys. Oh, we drew another white card. Fuck. Mystery reinforced from their opponent. We are sitting over here with like fucking no white mana. Lavinia, okay. So let's read her again to make sure I don't fuck this up, because I haven't played with her in a while. Each opponent casts non-creature spells with convert mana cost greater than the... Preferably a white land. Tails never fails! The fuck? I wonder if this deck doesn't play enough white sources. Like, honestly. Maybe, like, one petal? Maybe... Maybe one chrome mox? I think chrome mox would be pretty good in this deck. I mean, the deck doesn't really have ways to gain back card advantage, like most prison decks that play chrome mox do. If we draw a pearl right now, we can't even cast off. Our opponent time walked into a second turn. Slapped us for two again. If they don't play a land or a spell, that's a pretty funny time walk, right? Nope, they crack the turn. Young Peasy. Oh, shit, son. Come on, Plains. Or Caracas. Or Cavern. Any of those things. Tails never fails. We took three. Go to ten. Draw a mana source. Oh. Fucking yes. Okay. Let's play... Undo. Let's play a first striking three. Don't you dare have force. Oh, ye. F okay. Okay. We're going to take five. Then our crypt's going to zap us as well. Our ancient tomb is now unusable. We kind of need to draw balance, but we aren't playing it. So that's kind of awkward. I think in hindsight, our hand was actually a lot worse than we thought it was, or I thought it was, should I say? I bet someone was typing in the comment section, Vince, what the fuck are you doing? Our opponent's got a prestige 2019 vintage championship uh, avatar. Don't know how you get those, but I assume it's by doing something prestigious. Give me head. Give me fuck. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Right, let's bring some fucking removal in. Okay, we're now on the play again. Let's try and keep a hand that isn't deceptively looks like it's better than it is. This hand seems fucking good, though. So, Black Lotus out big Thalia. Mox plus Thal planes out the other Thalia, then play Norwood. The following turn? Yeah. Why not, eh? Why not? Actually, I might just Black Lotus out Glowrider. Okay, cast Black Lotus. It resolved. Sacrifice it for three white. Play a Glow Rider. Sweet. Play a white, play a red, play a Thalia. Now all their spells cost two more. Who I guess is going to play a land then pass back. They might play like a tomb and then use the tomb man to play like a... Nope, they didn't. Sweet. Our Norwood currently costs four mana, FYI. This is going to resolve because they'd have to have two mana. They'd have to crack this, get a land and have a simian in hand who to force this. They now fetch up a non-basic so it comes to play untapped. This is great. We've got Thalia, Big Thalia, and, like, fucking Proto-Thalia as well. This is a, a cool board state. I like it a lot. Mountain from our opponent. Two mana for a Mox, is it? Two mana for a Black Lotus. Okay, that seems pretty legit. If we draw a land, I'm going to slam Null Rod. 
I'm going to name Aldrazi here, because if we then top deck Aldrazi, they're better. They can force this now using their Lotus, but then it kind of has done half the damage that we wanted it to do. They crack their Lotus for three blue mana. And they cast Mystical Tutor to go and get something. Ugh, what the fuck is this going to be? Pyroclasm? Can you imagine Forked Bolt? If they got Forked Bolt, played a land, and then Forked Bolt my two X ones. Can you imagine it? They just simply got Lightning Bolt. Okay. That's that's fine. At least it's not Forked Bolt. Forked Bolt would be fucking absurd. They played a Volcanic Garden and tapped because of Big Thalia. Now they can't Bolt for a turn. So that's worked out pretty well. We're going to go to combat and attack. We hit the 9 one Nope. Cool. We got them. Okay, here we are. We can go Mox, Mox, Strip Mine them, play Revoker, play a Charson Zero. It's not terrible, but neither of these Mockers are white, so we can't play Glow Rider. I'm going to keep it. Fuck it. Who cares? Hell, we might play Charles of the Void on one if they're a cantripping deck. And a... I get the impression there's some form of PO alongside the stuff that they're playing. So... I can't remember game one because it's been a long day. So... I'm just going to play Charles and Zero. Okay, so they cast Brainstorm. Now they cast Preordain. And our Charles is just sitting here itching like, fuck, I really want to get those cantrips. We untap. Okay... We drew an Ancient Tomb, so let's go Mox Jet. Mox Emerald. Cast Revoker. Name Mox Sapphire. Wait, what? Mox Sapphire? I can't spell Sapphire. Cast the Strip Mine. We're going to kill this island now in case they have days, I guess? Cast the chance for zero. Oh, they need a wasteland. <laughs> okay. They don't want to lose their Volk here. We drew Cabin of Souls, so we're now going to go ahead and name Human. That was a fucking sick top deck, I, I tell you. I bet they're going to wish they named one of our Moxes now. They cast nothing. Fucking got them. I guess we now just draw the lands and then hopefully we'll kill them before that. the whole fact that we're not drawing any gas matters. Okay, nothing from them again. Sweet. I do like how my opponent plays no magic. Oh, hot diggity down. We didn't play a land last turn because I was too excited at what I was doing. Let's play a Thorn of Amethyst here, which costs us three mana, but I'm okay with it. They're probably thinking, why didn't they play a land last turn? Because either drew the Thorn or... Whatever, right? Like, pay one mana, take one damage, count on my thorn. Makes sense, really. They go to seven. We untap. <laughs> we drew a revoker. We're going to go to combat and attack in case they can somehow do something. But yeah, let's just go for Rexian revoker here. Well, Charles Levoid counts all the mana rocks. Let's just... And Soul Ring would require another land. Let's just go Soul Ring. So they can't go land, Soul Ring, and then, then pass back to us and die. This way they just don't do anything at all. Hot diggity damn! 4-1! Wish it was a 5-0! Vintage! It's fucking easy. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've been Vincent Austin's Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'm your resident Thalia fanatic. Don't forget to like the video. Drop a comment down below telling me what your favorite bit was. Was it the bit where I played a Thalia? Was it the bit where I played a Revoker? Was it the bit where I played both of them? Who the fuck knows? You do. Tell me in the comment section below. Subscribe. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ta for now.